Will the meeting please come to order and everyone take their seats? Will the meeting please come to order and everyone take their seats? Will you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for the oath of office, and please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Connecticut so long as you continue a citizen thereof, and that you will faithfully discharge according to law the duties as a member of the representative town meeting of the town of Greenwich to the best of your ability to help you God. Congratulations. <laughs> Okay. At this time, I'd like to recognize Tom Byrne. Thank you, Madam Chair. I view one of the most important responsibilities of the job of moderator to recommend to the body procedural uh, ways to accomplish what the body would like to do. And I was approached and asked to uh, recommend special rules to govern the two elections that are on our call tonight, election of a moderator and election of a moderator pro tem. And I emailed all of our district and committee chairs and asked them to forward the proposed special rules for election of moderator and moderator pro tem to the members. And so at this time, Madam Moderator, I move to suspend the rules to adopt special rules for election of moderator and moderator pro tem. There are six provisions to these special rules and I will read them. Number one, each candidate for moderator or moderator pro tem will be allotted a maximum of 10 minutes. This time can be used for nominating speeches, seconding speeches, or by the candidate personally. Two, the order of address by candidates will be determined by draw flip of the coin in the case of two candidates. This order will be used first for any nominating speeches and seconding speeches, and then for candidate speeches. Three, at the start of the meeting, each candidate will submit to the chair a list of speakers authorized to speak on the candidate's behalf. Four, after the completion of all nominating and seconding speeches, the candidates will be allowed to use their remaining time to address the body. Five, the moderator and moderator pro tem shall be elected by a majority of members present and voting. Six, this is to be used in the event of more than two candidates. In the event that no candidate receives a majority of votes, the candidate with the least votes shall be eliminated and additional ballots taken as a runoff among the remaining candidates until one candidate receives a majority of votes. So I move that we suspend the rules to adopt those special Rules for election of moderator and moderator pro tem. Is there a second? I think I'll call for a voice vote. Yes. Yes, Chris. Yes. Mr. Fox? Tom Byrne? Tom Byrne is correct. Chris, please take your seat and let's proceed with the vote. Was he ruling on which point, mine or the moderator's? Mr. Fox? The question was whether or not you needed a two-thirds vote to suspend the rules. The answer to that is yes. My point of order, Madam? Yes. My point of order is that it's not properly enforced because it was moved by someone who has a conflict of interest 
The rules are being suspended and changed to govern the election on one of the candidates that's been public as for that election and participated in it was the mover. Therefore, it's a conflict of interest and not properly enforced. Mr. Fox? As a matter of practice, there is no limitation on an individual who can make that type of motion. So I do not think it was improperly made. It was a proper motion for the body to decide. Thank you. I'll now call for a voice vote. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Against? No. Abstentions? The motion has carried. Item two now comes before us to elect a moderator. Are there any nominations? I'd like to recognize Karen Sadikan from District 6. Good evening, fellow RTM members and guests. I'm Karen Sadikan from District 6. I consider it a privilege to be given the opportunity to nominate Tom Byrne for moderator of the representative town meeting of Greenwich. Tom has a long history in Greenwich, having lived here for 27 years with his wife and four children. He is a lawyer by education and background, and now a teacher of high school physics. As a good friend of his recently told me, he's perhaps taking this opportunity to invest in the future through, st through his students. Tom has served on the RTM since 1998 and has completed eight terms as moderator. His past experience on the RTM includes four terms as member of the Education Committee, 11 terms as a member of the Claims Committee, and three terms as chair of District 6. I don't think I really need to give a campaign speech for Tom Byrne. Proof of the RTM's continued support for Tom is evidenced by the fact that he is running unopposed. However, I would not do him justice if I didn't elaborate on his candidacy. His qualifications and accomplishments are extensive and deserve recognition. The nominee is eminently qualified to lead the RTM. He has demonstrated his integrity over the past eight terms that he has served as moderator. His understanding of how our town government functions with the Board of Selectmen, the BET, and the RTM, his respect for and ability to execute the powers vested in the RTM by the town charter, and the style with which he leads our meetings all make him the ideal moderator. His knowledge of the law, of parliamentary procedure, and the RTM rules is par excellence. He rarely falters during the most challenging issues, maintaining meeting decorum, and manages to lead in an inclusive style, making accommodations where and as needed. Listening, reacting, and then responding, he deals effectively with this body, and that is not always an easy task. That being said, he's a firm believer of the RTM in its existing size. He apparently loves all 230 of us and would oppose any and all suggestions to reduce it. Tom also promotes and supports new initiatives, such as the use of technology for RTM business and the consent calendar to expedite consensus items, just to name two examples. To put it directly, in Tom's own words, at last week's six, District 6 meeting, quote, I consider it an honor and a privilege to serve as moderator of the RTM, and I am raring to continue, end quote. What more can I add to that but to encourage you to join me in confirming our approval of Tom Byrne as our RTM moderator for another term? Thank you. <clears throat> Is there a second? Are there any other nominations? Mr. Faze from District 11.
Good evening, RTM members and guests. My name is Joe Fays, and I'm with District 11, and I'm an alternate member of the Legislative and Rules Committee. I am pleased to nominate John Lucarelli of District 10 for the position of moderator of the RTM. He is a superb individual, and I support him as a candidate. His leadership qualities are very impressive. John ran for the chair of our Legislative and Rules Committee a week ago Monday, and there were three close votes. You can read the minutes of that meeting, which was substantial, for yourselves, and ask the same questions that I did. Then please judge for yourself on whether John contributes to the RTM. Here are the highlights of John's resume, and I've shortened this a lot. He's in his fifth term as a delegate from District 10. He's a delegate to the, the Appointments Committee and the Legislative and Rules Committee. He's familiar with RTM rules and procedures, the charter, the code, and the relationship of the town boards and agencies. He currently serves as chair of the POCD Town Properties Committee, where he shows successful leadership of our diverse membership interests in gaining consensus. John has listed his civic offices with the titles and all, but I'll just name the, the associations. The Round Hill Association, Greenwich Community and Police Partnership, Yale Alumni Association of Greenwich, Boy Scouts Greenwich Council, Coscob Rifle and Revolver Club, Lincoln Center Patron of the Arts Association. He is also a member of the Greenwich Land Trust, Greenwich Historical Society, St. Michael's Church, St. Lawrence Society, Friends of Nathaniel Witherell, Silver Shield Association, and Greenwich Hospital as a, a volunteers. John has a master's degree in public and private management from Yale University School of Organization and Management and he has a Bachelor of Arts in Economics from Fordham University. At present, John is a partner in a local company called Round Hill Design, and his company is involved in real estate develop, development and property management. John has a financial background and works harder than anyone on the RTM that I've known. Please join me in supporting John as our next moderator. Thank you. Is there a second? Mr. Schulte, District 12. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Greg Schulte from District 12. Tonight I have the honor of seconding the nomination of John Lucarelli for moderator of the RTM. In the past few years, I have gotten to know John on the, both the RTM and his service to many organizations in this town. I have continuously been impressed with the passion in which he serves these organizations, in many cases leads them, and they are fortunate enough to have him as a member. I am particularly impressed by John's chairmanship of the Citizens Police Academy Alumni Association Annual Benefit for Silver Shield, and the good that that, what that event does for the police officers of this town. Additionally, John's fact-based and results-oriented leadership style will enable the RTM to develop long-term goals, accountability, and metrics that are the hallmark of successful organizations. Support John Lucarelli for RTM moderator. He will invigorate our present, and he will lead this body into the future. Thank you. Are there any other nominations? Is there a motion for nominations to be closed? Second? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Objections? Abstentions, I'm sorry. Would Mr. Byrne or Mr. Lucarelli like to address the body? No coin flip <clears throat> needed. I'll go first because I view myself as the challenger. Although I am the incumbent moderator, I believe I have developed a record of challenges that I have made in defense of this body and the challenges I have made to this body. 
I challenged the Charter Revision Committee when it was put together to reduce the size of the RTM. And I went and testified before it, and I argued that uh, there was no better organization than our current organization. I've challenged the media to represent the work of the RTM accurately. I have challenged our RTM leaders to allow full and fair debate, to know the rules of procedure, and facilitate uh, debate so that all sides are heard fairly, to insist upon decorum, whereby all speakers are shown respect and common courtesy within the framework of our rules. And I have challenged our membership by structuring special committee assignments so as to ensure healthy skepticism of such committee recommendations by requiring that we look internally to see if we can make this organization even better. The hallmark of my philosophy as moderator is that we don't all have to agree on every issue. In fact, I welcome opposing views. I welcome this challenge tonight. As I believe the only way we can take any comfort that we've considered all angles and anticipated the full consequences of our actions is to hear opposing views. But just as important as we disagree, we must do so in a spirit of respect for each other's opinions. Uh, you have heard mention of my support for the use of technology going back to uh, my very first term when I put together a committee to take us into the digital age. And in 1998, we led the town in going onto the internet, establishing the first internet presence of any town body, thanks really to the work of three individuals. Bob Brady, who is here tonight having retired from the RTM and now joining uh, the BET, Jerry Anderson of District 10, and Fred DeCaro, who is now our registrar of voters. And Bob Brady, in fact, continued uh, leadership of the technology advisory committee that, uh, and so I thank him for all of those significant contributions as well as all the other responsibilities I asked Bob to fulfill, and I will miss Bob greatly. You know what I bring to the conduct of the meeting, and I won't talk about that. I am proud of the record of the Claims Committee, where we foster lively debate and encourage expression of differing opinions. And the results have been too good to expect to last, uh, but it, it has been a wonderful committee. And finally, I will say this. I have complete faith in the judgment of the RTM. I believe it makes good decisions, and I believe it will make a good decision tonight. Uh, but I want you to know that I am as energetic about doing this job as when I first took office. If you choose to bestow the privilege that I've enjoyed on another person tonight, I will say thank you for the honor of having been able to stand in front of you for the past 16 years. If you choose to allow me to continue as moderator, I pledge that I will invest all my energies and abilities to do the job right and to make this institution an even greater one. Thank you. Mr. Lucarelli. Thank you, Madam Moderator. First off, I am greatly honored to have my name put in nomination as your moderator. While serving our town for over a decade as RTM delegate from District 10 on the Appointments and Legislative and Rules Committee and on other town committees, the RTM moderator's job has always struck me as the key leadership and objective tone setter for, uh, tone setter for our Greenwich go government. Over these many years, several factors of good government rise to mind. Responsibility, open information, and progress. First, our fellow neighbors and friends have entrusted us, the RTM, to speak for them in matters concerning their welfare and their families. This is a great responsibility, which needs every advantage we can gain in order to fulfill our sacred oath to the town. Secondly, only through co uh, complete and open information can we make responsible decisions and votes for our constituencies and ourselves. 
Today, technology gives us rapid and accurate delivery of that information. Each of us is able to make responsible votes if the technology is openly applied. Lastly, the times, economy, government, and living challenges for our families are changing ever more rapidly than in our parents' day. To languish in the ways of the past is to do a disservice to the town of Greenwich. The RTM must have constant progress to meet the challenges of today and tomorrow. It is your choice whether we seize the advantages of today, like using this smartphone technology, or sink slowly into our dependence solely on this manila envelope. The oath of office, which we all just took, demands we recognize and satisfy these three factors of responsibility, open information, and progress. It is the responsibility, duty, and service of the RTM moderator to lead and facilitate our efforts to do so. Now, I'd be proud, honored, and humbled to be chosen as your moderator. Unfortunately, given the short notice of this nomination, I've made no, plan no plans or arrangements, both personally and professionally, to accept such a huge responsibility. But in, and in all candor, I haven't spoken to my boss at home, so. <laughs> Therefore, I must respectfully decline this nomination, but I thank you for the great honor of being considered for your moderator. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Mr. Fox, I have a question. We'll proceed to a vote now. I ask district chairs to mark the card, column one, Tom Byrne, column two, John Lucarelli, and then have your delegation proceed to vote. Yes. No, Mr. Fox. <laughs> I stand corrected. The town attorney did not hear Mr. Lucarelli decline at the end. So therefore, John Lucarelli's name will not appear on the ballot. In column one, please put the name of Tom Byrne. Yes. By their form, there being only one candidate, I believe our rules call for a written vote. So I would like to tell the district chairs to mark the card, column one, Tom Byrne, and to have your delegation to vote. If there are any members who came in late and have to take the oath, please come forward before you vote.
Miss Warning. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah. The results for item two, Tom Byrne, 190 votes. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Let me look for my uh, iPhone here. Oh, oh it's, it's just a Blackberry. All right. All right. Item, item three now comes before us, the election of a moderator pro tem. We are now operating under the special rules that we adopted at the beginning of the meeting. We did flip a coin uh, prior to the meeting, and Paul Curtis and his uh, nominators and seconders will go first. So what we will do, uh, I will recognize the nominator, someone to nominate Mr. Curtis and second him. I will then do the same. Uh, well, you know what? Technically, that, that is what we, we will do. I will get a nomination and a second for Joan Caldwell. I will then open the floor to any additional. Um, well, you know what? No. <laughs> Uh, what I will do, since <laughs> All right. at this point, we do know that there are two interested candidates. So are there any additional interested candidates for moderator pro tem? Hearing none, I will close the floor to nominations, and we will now proceed with the two announced candidates. So at this point, I will recognize Jim Bonney of District 4. Thank you. I'm going to make this uh, short and sweet, as I often do. Hopefully, it's sweet. Um, Paul Curtis has been a member of the RTM for 12 years. During that time, he served on the following committees, Finance, Town Services, Budget Overview, and he's currently on the Technology Advisory Committee. Paul, along with Bob Brady, is one of the primary architects of the RTM website and strives to share as much information with RTM members and the public to ensure an open flow of information between the RTM and the citizens of Greenwich and their elected representatives. We all received a copy of Paul's resume. I believe many of us know what he does for the representative town meeting. Many of us have seen him at our meeting, and many of us have depended on him for his innate knowledge of Robert's rules. And let's face it, this is a key requisite for the position of moderator pro tem. What I'd like to give you is a little background about Paul Curtis and why he is the best choice for moderator pro tem. Paul Curtis grew up in Greenwich. Paul attended Greenwich High School, and he regularly utilizes many of the town facilities. Paul, his wife, his two children, often use Western Greenwich Civic Center the Dorothy Hamill skating rink, and town beaches. Paul Curtis's personal interest in the public schools because his son and his daughters attend Western Middle School. Members of his family have utilized the facilities at Nathaniel Witherell. He's connected to the town. Paul's parents, 
His in-laws, they live in Greenwich. Paul Curtis is raising his family here. He is concerned about the future of Greenwich for his children, his parents, and for he and his wife. Paul is extremely intelligent and prides himself on keeping current with changing times, whether it is technology or general knowledge of the workings of the town of Greenwich. Paul is a dependable resource that we in Greenwich should tap and utilize to our advantage. It is my pleasure to nominate Paul Curtis for the position of moderator pro temp. Betsy Fruman, District 9. Congratulations, Mr. Moderator, and newly installed fellow RTM members. I'm Betsy Fruman from District 9, and I'm proud to second the nomination of Paul Curtis. I believe Paul will re-energize the RTM. There's no question that we as a body need Paul's IT expertise. But even more, we need a leader who will empower the members, who will listen to the members and energize them to work with him, who will be available to all of us to help us, new members and old members, navigate our RTM systems. Paul will work for us and with us to make the RTM more efficient. Paul will get it done. One of the major jobs of the pro tem as described in our rules is to make sure the explanos are correct and that they give us the information we need to make informed decisions. Over the past few years, our call and our explanos have become filled with inaccuracies and omissions. Paul will make it his mission to correct this. He will not accept roadblocks. He will get it done. Another job of the moderator pro tem is to maintain an official bulletin board, the main entrance of town hall, where notices of RTM activities, meetings, etc., are to be posted. That's not getting done. How many times have you had to seek out a janitor to help you find your meeting? Paul is very interested in making this bulletin board concept work. He will get it done. Paul's leadership style is all about cooperation, positive energy, and getting it done. He will bring new life and new light to our leadership. I thank Joan and applaud her for her years of service. However, this position is not about thanking. It's not an honorarium. It's about making the RTM work better. We need new eyes to work at finding solutions. We need to encourage new talent toward RTM leadership. In this way, we will keep the RTM vital. We should not have the same people on every special committee, the same chairman year after year, we need new blood, new ideas. We need Paul Curtis. Please join me in voting for Paul Curtis for moderator pro tem, and let's get some of these things done. Josh Brown, District 8. Mr. Moderator, fellow members and guests, congratulations, Mr. Moderator. Congratulations to all our members. I'm Josh Brown, a delegate from District 8, here and with the proud honor to put Joan Caldwell's name into nomination for the moderator pro tem. I think the explanos cover a brief summary of the things that Joan has done through her career. She's been a long, long time member, probably the longest uh, member of this body, and has ex exceptional knowledge of the inner workings, the history about a lot of the topics that even today continue to plague the town or challenge the town, create opportunities. I met her when I first joined as a delegate to District 10 in 1993, and I got the look that from Joan of 
great new membership, new blood, now how can we put you to work? And was promptly put into the Finance Committee, became chair, was there for 10 years, and has continued that kind of approach of growing new, new, new members of this body to give them opportunities to uh, grow, to lead, and uh, inspire uh, and accomplish the many good things that this body can and, and, and uh, does do. I think we know and have seen her ability to lead committees, numerous committees, especially around the rules and governance of this body, bringing forward uh, any number of recommendations on how to improve uh, how this body functions. Uh, again, trying to work through the challenging topics, offering or enabling people to bring opposing viewpoints, again, in a constructive and collaborative way. Um, I think it, she is very supportive in encouraging our members to step up and continue to take on those new challenges. She has a way and, uh, about her, her ability to work through town hall, the various departments and boards. Uh, she has direct con contact with many, many people who welcome her to discuss the topics, help share information, and help move those topics forward. She does have a strong personality, can't deny that. I think we've seen that. But I think it's very fair to say that it's a balanced um, forcefulness to get to the best answer for this body, for the town, and help us become better informed through that process. The role of the moderator pro tem is focused on not the accuracy of the information, uh, not to make sure that it's correct per se, to make sure that it's right and robust is a good, good way to put it. There are processes that are in place that are hard to change. There have been numerous attempts to change those. It's not an easy task. She, I believe, will continue to in attempt to improve the quality and the thoroughness of the explanatory comments as well as the items on the call. She has moved into the, third, uh, the 20th century, not quite yet the 21st. Don't know that she has the iPhone or handheld yet. But she does have email and does work through email. Uh, she does look at the talent that we do have within the body and within the town and try to tap into that talent, talent to have those uh, things do uh, what they do best, to bring the best to the surface. I've known Joan for many years. She's extremely knowledgeable. She's a leader, a great coach, and a great mentor. Please join me in voting for Joan as moderator pro tem. Bob Burns, District 10. Good evening, Mr. Moderator, fellow RTM members and guests. My name is Bob Burns from District 10, and I rise to second the nomination of Joan Caldwell for the position of pro Moderator Pro Tem. For the past 10 years, I have worked with Joan as a member of District 10, where she is a district chair. For the past eight years, I have served with Joan on the Labor Contracts Committee. For the past 10 years, I have witnessed her stellar performance as the Moderator Pro Tem. From my observations of Joan's capabilities over those previously mentioned years, I believe she fulfills the desired characteristics of the moderator pro tem position to a T. She works very hard. She knows how to get things done. She's very diligent. She is absolutely dependable. She is as solid as a rock. In Joan, there are no surprises. She continues to handle the moderator pro tem position flawlessly. I ask that you please join me in the vote for Joan Caldwell to continue as moderator pro tem. All right, uh, Paul Curtis, who has five minutes remaining. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my colleagues on the RTM, especially hello to our new members, uh, members of the BET, the Board of Education. I see a selectman here too, Mr. Fox. One of the things that makes the RTM a unique organization is the fact that we are citizen legislators. We have people from every occupation, every area of town. They are very representative, and Mr. Byrne will tell you this too. We are not politicians. We are all volunteers. 
So we stand before you, we come to these meetings and vote on behalf of our constituents. We're not paid politicians, we don't campaign. But the moderator's pro tem's job is, part of it is to run the meetings in the absence of the moderator, in case he's not here. Um, as it turns out, our moderator, to his credit, has, I believe, a 100% attendance record, um, or at least during my 12 years on the RTM, Mr. Byrne has never been absent. He has stepped down on occasion, and uh, our moderator, pro tem, Joan Caldwell, has taken over the meeting. But, in running the meeting, there's a few things that are very good to do here and understand that Mr. Byrne is probably the single best teacher of how to operate a meeting of this size that I've ever seen. The other jobs that the moderator pro tem has really have to do with helping the RTM process and helping the RTM members make good, informed, and reasonable decisions. When you step back and you say, um, we have to work on, I'm sorry, <laughs> the duty of the moderator pro tem is not simply to get information out there, not simply to get it posted, not simply to provide it to the membership. That is part of it, but also the moderator pro tem is there to make sure that everyone can get and understand the underlying organization, the basic part of the RTM, how we work, okay, how you get things done, who do you talk to, where are our committees, who are the chairman, right? We are the public and our public and our constituents really need to be able to do this. They need to get that information. We need to provide it to them. So one of the things I am absolutely adamant about is making sure that everything about the RTM, our organization, our votes, our minutes, how membership is built, who our members are, is available to anyone who wants it. Our constituents need to have that. The other part of it is our explanatory notes. And I, uh, my opponent, opponent, um, the current moderator pro tem will agree that uh, on occasion our, our explanatory notes are not all that great, okay? While she puts that off to a problem of process, one of the things is, is that I don't believe that that's true. Part of our process is, is that the call and the explanatory notes and the time between being able to get information from a department head is very short, and that's true. But that's where you can use some other mechanisms to provide that information to the members and to the public. And that's where technology steps into this. Our call closes on a Friday. It is mailed out to the membership the following week. So if there's any additional information that needs to be included in that printed call, it has to happen in that very short period of time. Now, typically, that doesn't happen. Also, we have committee meetings, and the committee chairman and the committees themselves may request additional information. How do we get that disseminated? What about simple things like committee votes? There's where things like technology, email, website, whatever your pleasure is, really becomes helpful. And it's not about changing the RTM, it's about progress. It's about taking another step in providing that information to the membership. There are many members, myself included, who work off a of paper. But there are also very many members who are very comfortable working in the electronic realm. And we need to make sure that we get the information to all of them. We have to do this. We have to make sure that all that information is available to them. Lastly, the last uh, function that the moderator pro tem does is he meets with the districts and committee chairs uh, along with the moderator uh, on a regular basis. As a candidate, I view that as probably the most important thing. And the reason is, is that the only way to make progress in the RTM, the only way to advance this organization, the only way to get all of the members comfortable with what we're doing or what needs to be done is to talk to them. 30 seconds. And the primary group of people to talk to are our districts and committee chairmen. And I want to hear from them, and I will definitely listen to them. And finally, 
Your choice tonight is, is very simple. Do you wish to continue to do things the way we have for the last 15, 20, 25 years? Or do you want to advance how the RTM accomplishes its business? If you want to advance how we do our business, I ask that you support for me. Thank you. Joan Caldwell. who has five minutes and 40 seconds. <clears throat> Mr. Moderator, members of town meeting, I come before you again tonight to ask for your support and your vote for me as moderator pro tem. I've had this job for a number of years, as it's been pointed out, and I think in that length of time I have demonstrated my ability to handle the problems that come up in town meeting. I think I've demonstrated my ability to seize the opportunity when it occurs and to move things forward where I can do that. The chief reason you elect a moderator pro tem is to run this meeting in the absence of the moderator. Fortunately, it hasn't happened very often, but it has happened, and you've seen me up there do it, you know I can do it, and I think you were comfortable with me when I did it. That's important. I'm a stand-in for the moderator at meetings that he cannot attend. I assist him in problem-solving issues that may require a meeting with department heads, the first selectman, the town attorney, you name it, any number of people. It's a people responsibility, it's a one-to-one, -one. and I do it because he can't. I arrange for meetings, the orientation session, the combined meetings, the moderators committee, and on and on, and as a matter of fact, for this meeting tonight, because the meeting room we were going to be in was not available to us. And that meant finding another place, moving all of our trappings, making sure this was set up so it was comfortable for you to operate in. Those are little things that go on constantly behind the scenes that you don't see. They are people-oriented, and they cannot be done by a machine. Was it always this way? No. In Al Varner's time, he lived and worked in Greenwich. He did it for himself. Dave Tobin lived and worked most of the time in Greenwich and did it for himself. Tom Byrne lives in Greenwich and works outside of Greenwich. So he needs another set of eyes and ears, and I am, that I, I am those eyes and ears. There are people who'd like to make this election about technology. Okay, let's talk about technology. This moderator appointed a technological committee when he first came to office, and in that first year, we achieved many things that have not been achieved elsewhere in that time frame. We are up on email. We have a website. We communicate with each other constantly by technology. But so far, all that I've heard that is needed and should be done are things that can be done by members of the technology committee either as they are now or an expanded committee. They do not require the moderator pro tem title. And my, my question is, if they are so important, why haven't they been done to this point? I agree that it's helpful to have technology. And I believe we will go to electronic voting, probably with the smartphone or the iPad or you name it. There are all sorts of things out there that are rapidly developing. And that will move us even further and further into the 21st century. But what it cannot replace and shouldn't replace is the ability to deal with people. Government is a people business. And once we get away from being able to deal with people, our business is dead. As far as the call is concerned, nobody complains about the explanatory comments more than I do. You really don't want to be near me when I first open the envelope. The problem is not to be easily dismissed. The call, the, both the uh, proposal and the explanatory comments belong 
to the proposer until they are printed or put up on the web. And we cannot add to them, change them, or do anything to them until they are printed and up on the web. And at that point, they're in the hands of the committee. It's too late. But the, and we've been struggling with this. We've looked at changing the timeline. It's not possible and give the, the town clerk the time she needs to get the material printed into your hands. But another idea occurred to me, and I think it might work. That is to ask for an earlier submission date, not submission, or not filing, but submission, for the explanatory comments. If they came in a week early, it would give us a chance to really read them. If they're deficient, send them back, get corrections, amendments, additions, and still get them into the town clerk's office by the filing date and out to you on the same schedule that you've got now. We've never thought about it, but it's an idea and it's something that need, worth, uh, worth trying. Finally, I think we've come to that point in our technological history when we need to sit down once again with all of our department heads, not as a group, 30 but, seconds. but one on one, and work with them and teach them the who, what, why, and when that every reporter knows. I'll close as I started. I ask for your vote and your support for me as moderator pro tem. I love the job, I'd like to continue, and God, I believe in this institution. All right, we will proceed to vote now for moderator pro tem. I ask the district uh, chairs to please make sure you have the correct card. In the first column, we will list the names in the order in which they spoke. So the first column should be Paul Curtis at the top, and in the second column, Joan Caldwell. And you check uh, the appropriate column, obviously. Oh, whatever color it is, yes, green. Okay. It should say on it, election for moderator pro tem. Um, thank you. All right, in the first column it is Paul Curtis, and in the second column, Joan Caldwell. While we are voting and tallying the vote, it has been our tradition at the January meeting to have the RTM leaders introduce themselves. So uh, since the district chairs are currently occupied with the voting, I will ask our committee chairs to please come forward and introduce yourselves and your vice chair and secretary. And you may proceed in any order. Uh, that you choose. Just introduce your, yourselves and your committees and other district of, uh, committee officers. Mr. Harkins, why don't you go first? John Harkins, chair of our Town Services Committee. I'm John Harkins. I'm from District 6. I've served on the Town Services Committee for four years, and I've had been honored by being named chair for the new committee. I live in Old Greenwich. Uh, my daughter went through the school system. You, you can just, and I'm here to stay. You, but, but if you could just identify your vice chair and Excuse secretary me. as well, so everyone. Excuse me. Thank you. The vice chair is Richard Newman, and the secretary is Carlo Cantavero. Thank you very much. Good evening. My name is Alexis Volgaris. I'm from District Six, and I'm chairing Health and Human Services this term. Our vice chair is Nick Edwards from District 8, and our secretary is Bill Brambrick from District 12. Good evening. I'm Josh Brown, chairman of the Education Committee from District 8. The vice chairman is Mark Pruner from District 10, and Kim Blank from District 7 is our secretary. Hello, I'm Gordon Ennis from District 8. I'm a chairman of the Finance Committee. Uh, we have a lot of officers on the Finance Committee this year. Irv Porter and Angela Highland are both vice chair. And uh, this is the way you build a staff, okay? Um, Lauren Rabin and Jeff Doty are both uh, uh, secretaries. Lauren is a recording secretary and Jeff is a secretary of the committee. Thank you. Hello, I'm Al Small from District 10. I'm chair of Transportation Committee. Uh, vice chair is Steve Warzoa, and the uh, secretary is Paul Settlemeyer. Thank you.
I'm Karen Sadatkan from District 6. I'm chairman of Parks and Rec. John Dolan from District 7 is our vice chair, and Bob Stafford from District 12 is our secretary. I'm Douglas Wells from District 2, uh, chairman of the Legislative and Rules Committee. Our vice chair uh, returning in that capacity is Kip Bergweger from District 8. We have a new secretary, uh, Jim Bolger from District 6. Good evening. I'm Bill Drake from District 5. I was re-elected chairman of the Budget Overview Committee. Steve Warzoa from District 9 was re-elected vice chairman of our committee. And Eric Norgard from District 6 was elected secretary of our committee. Thank you. I'm John DeChapel, chairman of the Public Works Committee. Our vice chairman is Don Conway, and our secretary is Don Hamilton. Good evening. I'm Peter Berg from uh, District 8, Cost Cobb. I was reelected chairman of the Land Use Committee. Our uh, vice chair is Peter Quigley from District 7. Our secretary is Michael Carter from District 6. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, new members. I'm Christopher von Kaiserling uh, from the great District 8, which you will become more and more aware of. Uh, I have the pleasure of serving on the Appointments Committee, and they were kind enough to uh, re-elect uh, me as chair. Uh, and re-elect uh, Lucy Krasner as our vice chairman. And Candace Garthwaite of District 6 was kind enough to step forward as our secretary. Bless her, and we appreciate her service. Thank you. All right. Uh, I now ask our district chairs to please come forward. Obviously, the voting that is currently underway is top priority, so um, if you need to attend to that, then you could send up a vice chair, or you could have the vice chair take care of the voting. But I now invite representatives from our districts to please introduce the officers of the district. Everyone please uh, come up so we don't await the long walk from the back of the room. Beginning with Dean Goss, chair of District 1. Uh, I got the pleasure, I guess, of being reelected as our chairman, and uh, Carl Carlson as our vice chairman. Joan Pankowski this year will serve as our secretary. Hi, I'm Kevin Brogan from District 2. Uh, our vice chairman is Suzanne Geis Robbins, and our secretary is Wilmot Nisinovich. Hi, I'm Thomas Canadius, chairman of District 3, Chickahominy. Our vice chair is Louise Bavis, and our secretary is Claudia Velez. My name is Colleen Jenkins. I'm chair of District 6, Old Greenwich. Our vice chair is Karen Sadikan, and our secretary is Stephen Meskers. Hello, I'm Vice Chairman uh, Valerie Stauffer, Chairman of District 7. Vice Chairman is Bill Galvin, and Secretary is Mary Jacobson. Hello, I'm Jenny Krobe, District of <laughs> Chairman of District 8. Our Vice Chair is Josh Brown, and our Secretary is Steve Ng. I'm Betsy Fruman. I have the pleasure of chairing District 9 again. Our vice chair is Steve Warazoa, who seems to be the vice chair of a lot of things. And our secretary is Lauren Rabin. I'm Mary Ferry. I was reelected chairman of District 5. Lucy Krasner is our vice chairman, and Karen Ostemel is our secretary. I'm Joan Caldwell, and I have the honor of chairing District 10, Northwest Greenwich again. My vice chairman is Jerry Anderson, and the secretary is Erica Hoffman Prunell. 
I'm Despina Fasiliotis. I'm chairman of District 11. Susan Fahey is our secretary, and Rosalind Nicastro, I'm sorry, Susan Fahey is our vice chair, and Rosalind Nicastro is our secretary. Good evening. I'm Tom Greco, the uh, vice chair of District 4. Uh, our chairman is Bob McKnight. And our secretary is Susan McKay. I'm Bob May, chairman of District 12. Our vice chairman is Barbara Hinman, and our secretary is Miriam Menon. All right, thank you very much. I look forward to working with all of you in the coming term. While we are tallying the vote for moderator pro tem, uh, we do have another administrative matter, Josh Brown, who is the RTM liaison to the CIP committee. Mr. Moderator, fellow members and guests, uh, myself and Irv Porter are the liaisons to the town's uh, capital improvement project committee. Uh, that is the committee that evaluates the capital projects and puts forward a recommendation to the first selectman uh, for the annual budget process. Uh, the committee first met on January 4th. It reviewed a long list of projects. I'm going to not say in the greatest of detail, but to get their head around the, the requests that uh, exist. Uh, they've been broken into four categories following our recommendations from prior years, uh, which is to have them grouped by uh, routine maintenance items, significant maintenance items, new capital projects, upgrades to existing capital items, and new discretionary capital items. Uh, the funding available through the BET's calculation uh, indicates approximately $44 million is available in this coming fiscal year uh, to fund capital projects. However, the requests that are put forward through those four categories total uh, approximately $55, $56 million. A uh, 10 to $12 million difference in available funding versus the ask. In prior years, there hasn't been a whole lot of discussion about what projects need to be taken out. It was, sure, we can go ahead and fund this. Let's go ahead and do this. So this is um, uh, a first time in a couple of years that the, the committee is going to have to go through in the ranking and the evaluation of what capital projects can be put off uh, to uh, another time. Um, also to note is the BET has established a $210 million debt limit. Uh, the projection is currently that that should be hit somewhere in the fiscal 15-16 uh, time period. Depends on what projects obviously come to fruition between now and then, but the cap isn't that far away. Um, we've made commitments, this body has made commitments for the Nathaniel Witherell project, which has taken a large chunk or will take a large chunk of that the new Central Firehouse, NISA, and other major projects. There are still some major projects left to be done. The, fire, the Central Fire Station, the question of the King Street Fire Station, uh, the Holly Hill Master Plan, and uh, as well as all of the infrastructure, the drainage um, uh, issues that uh, have existed. The second meeting was held uh, last uh, Wednesday. There's a third meeting scheduled for tomorrow. Uh, last week, uh, Mr. Porter and I uh, spent our time uh, at the request and permission of Mr. Tessie to comment on the need for uh, and the importance of continuing the maintenance programs to keep the infrastructure, to keep the capital assets that we have up in tip-top form and shape and not let them uh, become dilapidated or uh, worse off. Otherwise, we'll have to you know, tear those down and, and replace them at very large cost as well as uh, the criteria, understanding the criteria for the weighting and the ranking of those capital projects. Uh, I and Mr. Porter will keep you advised as this moves forward. If you have questions about the capital items, please don't hesitate to, sen hesitate to send me an email or communication, and we'd be happy to uh, keep you informed or answer any of those specific questions. Thank you. Thank you. I have the result of the election of moderator pro tem. Joan Caldwell, 113, Paul Curtis, 86. Congratulations, Ms. Caldwell. And I would like to congratulate Mr. Curtis for uh, the challenge and running a very um, fine campaign for moderator pro tem, and I'm sure the body looks forward to uh, his services. 
in the coming term. Um, Chris von Keiseling, Chair of our Appointments Committee. Ladies and gentlemen, as most of you know and some of your new people will know, the Appointments Committee, besides vetting uh, nominations by the Board of Selectmen for appointment by the RTM, also has the responsibility of making several appointments themselves for the RTM's appointment. That's for the members of two special committees of the RTM. One is the Labor Contracts Committee, uh, and the other is the Claims Committee. Every term, every two-year term, that membership comes up again for reappointment. Uh, besides that, there is a condemnation in com commission in town for which we also make nominations. Our committee will be entertaining any names that you may have uh, in the next month. We would like to get into this in uh, February and start uh, interviewing, so we'll have ready for you uh, nominations for the uh, March meeting. But if you, any of you have any uh, interest yourselves or know of somebody who's interested, Please put your name forward to me, and we'll uh, tell you what you need to do, and we'll put your name in consideration for nomination. That's for the labor contracts, which is very important, and the claims committee, which the moderator discussed earlier, uh, which is equally important, and the condemnation commission deals with the sewers and condemnations and apportionment of fees on sewer projects. Thank you. I would like to add uh, a comment about the claims committee. Uh, the claims committee, unlike any of our other committees which are advisory, the, uh, the Claims Committee instead acts in place of the RTM. It actually makes the appropriations that may be required to satisfy any judgments or pay any settlements. It consists of 10 RTM members. By rule, the moderator is the chair of the committee, and nine other RTM members are nominated by the Appointments Committee and then appointed by the full RTM. It's a very critical committee. It meets uh, as needed, called by the Law Department based on uh, litigation schedules. Um, and it is extremely helpful to either have legal training or some legal background with respect to uh, risk management, settlement of claims. Um, and if anyone has any questions, I invite you to contact me. Um, it is a vital committee of the RTM. Um, and one other word you have heard mention tonight of a technology advisory committee. It is not provided for in our rules, but uh, has existed um, on an informal basis. I have asked for any interested members who have an interest or skill in technology to meet and uh, suggest ways that we can use technology to um, uh, run the business of the RTM. And I ask anyone interested in serving in that capacity to please notify me. All right, that now finally brings us to the business of tonight. We do need to approve the minutes of our December 12 meeting. I do note one correction. On page six of the draft minutes, the, uh, there are two votes that are recorded in the uh, proposed minutes that were sent to you, and the abstentions for those two votes were listed as votes against. You see two, um, two numbers that are labeled votes against. That second against is, of course, uh, those who abstain. So, that change will be made. Are there any other suggested changes to the proposed December 12 minutes? Hearing none and absent objection, the minutes as amended stand adopted upon unanimous consent. Now, I notified our district and committee chairs that based upon the recommendations we received from our districts, I would recommend the following organization of our call tonight. Um, I intend to designate as consent calendar items items 7 and 9, and pursuant to our rules, if those remain on the consent calendar, we will hear no committee reports and no debate on those items. I will also recommend that items 5, 6, and 11 be combined for voting purposes, and uh, item 4 has been withdrawn, which would leave to be considered separately 
items. We have taken care of one, two, and three, so that would leave items eight and 10 to be considered separately. So at this point, I will now designate the following two items to be placed on our consent calendar. The first is item seven. That is the appointment of Angelica Arenas to be a regular member of the Board of Social Services for a term expiring March 31, 2015. I will also place on our consent calendar item nine, which is the appointment of David Quimby, uh, I mean Ormsby, to be a regular member of the Nathaniel Witherell Board for a term expiring March 31, 2015. David Ormsby. Is there any objection to the designation of items seven and nine for our consent calendar? Hearing none, will the district chairs please mark your voting cards, consent calendar items, seven and 10, and proceed to poll your delegation. Uh, seven and nine, excuse me. Thank you. That now brings us uh, to the combined items that I will now suggest. Uh, it was the consensus to combine items five, six, and 11 for voting purposes. And in order to do that, we require a motion to suspend the rules. Is there a motion to suspend the rules to combine items 5, 6, and 11 for voting purposes? The motion to suspend the rules has been moved and seconded to combine items 5, 6, and 11 for voting purposes. The motion to suspend the rules is not itself debatable and requires a two-thirds majority to pass. All those in favor of combining items 5, 6, and 11 for voting purposes, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? That motion has carried. So item five now comes before us. May we have the resolution on that item? Denise Sav Savage, Director of Conservation. Good evening. Item number five, resolve that the Conservation Commission of the Town of Greenwich be hereby authorized to accept receipts from the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation's Long Island Sound Futures Fund program in the amount of $3,500 in these receipts to become appropriations in appropriate accounts upon approval of the Board of Estimate and Taxation. Thank you. Will the member please move the adoption of the resolution? Resolution on item five has been moved and seconded. May we have the reports of the committees that considered this item, beginning with Peter Berg, chair of our Land Use Committee. Evening, Mr. Moderator. Uh, the Land Use Committee met last Monday night. All districts were represented. Denise Savageau presented uh, this item, which was a acceptance of a $3,500 grant from the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation, which uh, in turn is funded by the federal government. Um, and the purpose is to construct an eel ladder to collect and distribute American eels above various dams along the Byram River watershed. And in your package, you received a colored map uh, of the town showing some 40 dams on the Byram River uh, that impede uh, these eels from going upstream. Denise emphasized the critical nature of the American eel population and its importance to the food chain and habitat. Our vote was 12 0, zero. Thank you. <laughs> Discussion on item five. Question. Jim Boutel, District 2. Mr. Moderator, fellow members, I rise to pose a question that I posed in our district um, and had our representative of the Land Use Committee seek an answer to that was not received. This applies to both items that are on uh, the combined voting calendar. This and the following item are both grants and small amounts of money coming in. Item 11 you're referring to. Yes. Yeah. Well, this item as well, Mr. Moderator. Yes, I know. Um, that in our 
budget, which will come in May. In the very front of the budget, we have budget language, resolution language, that grants various departments and such the authority to apply for and accept grants to become part of the budget. I raised the question, not having found either of these programs in those budget language resolutions, where our town departments get the authority to apply for these grants in the first place. I raise that, and it may seem minor. We're talking about an eel program on one, and we're talking about land mapping on another. But it's not just the money we're receiving. It's staff time. I, a large part of my job is preparing grants for a living. If you're going to prepare successful grants, you're going to invest staff time. Staff time is personnel dollars. That's where the bulk of the town money goes, is personnel expense. So I would simply ask through you, Mr. Moderator, whether these are, in fact, in order. They both come out of the Conservation Commission, I believe. Where do they get the authority to apply for the grants in the first place? And are they required to have that budget authority to have applied for the grants? All right, Mr. Fox, uh, there were some conversations regarding these two items, perhaps a slightly different issue, but are you in a position to respond to Mr. Boutel's question? I think the uh, question that Mr. Butel has put before the body is slightly different than the one, Mr. Moderator, you and I had discussed. Uh, we do have a series of resolutions which come before your body in May which talk about the authorization to accept them uh, and then appropriate them. And the first answer, as I understand the question, is that's what we are here for this evening. We are here to ask your authority to accept the funds and appropriate them. That's the process that we're following. I think the second question that Mr. Butel has put forward is more one for the individual department heads in terms of where do they justify the time they put in in, app in applying for these funds. I would assume that relates more to an attempt to benefit the town, to acquire money, to reduce the burden on taxpayers, to pursue concepts that are considered valuable within the perspective of that particular department. Uh, I don't think that's a legal question, Mr. Moderator. That is more a question of how a given department head would justify their particular time in taking the time from the day-to-day -day acti day -day activities to apply for, uh, for a particular fund. But what we're here for this evening is to get your approval to accept it and spend it. And I think that's the legal question, in my opinion, is for that purpose it is in legal order. All right. So the specific question was, is item 5 and is item 11 in legal order, and you have just answered that it is. Is that correct, Mr. Fox? Yes. All right, so our town attorney is of the opinion that these items are in legal order. Mr. Boutel. Yes, I understand. And Mr. Fox has said Mr. Fox as Fox is saying except he's not addressing the question of the authority if it's in the budget language saying giving a board the authority to apply for and accept. Yes, you may come forward. Again, folks, this might seem like small potatoes, but let me give you some history. Twenty years ago the town applied for a million dollars in federal money to beautify Greenwich Avenue. I went before the BET at the time, uh, chaired by Sam Stoll. John Marganot was our selectman. I went before the Planning and Zoning Commission. I don't want to say I was responsible solely, but we wound up giving the money back. Anybody that wants to know why we gave the money back, I'll talk to you privately about it. It is not the story that was put out publicly. But we wound up having to give a million dollars back because a town official submitted a grant that could have done grave damage to this town. That's why we gave the money back. So my concern is when we apply for grants, just the application itself can have legal consequences for the town of Greenwich, even if we don't get awarded the grant. And I'll go into it. 
the justification for the for the money that was going to go to Greenwich Avenue was improved shore access. All right, that let's, was right. Let's, let's leave the Greenwich Avenue uh, 15 years okay. ago. Well, Mr. Moderator raised the point simply because we were. Well, let's. We're dealing with item five right now. This is well. My point being, Mr. Moderator, study. the question I want answered is where and whether legal authority is required to apply for federal and state grants. All right. I believe Mr. Fox has answered that, that it is not required. Is that correct, Mr. Fox? Yes. Uh, the, the simple answer is yes, but let me expound on it a little yes bit. Yes to I what? Y yes, it, it, it is appropriately. Yes, approval of the, is not necessary to apply for this particular grant. Okay. If you go back and look at the 40-odd uh, resolutions that this body has before it at our annual May meeting, the wording, I dis respectfully disagree slightly with Mr. Battelle on this, the wording is different from resolution to resolution. Some of the resolutions talk about apply and accept. Some of the resolutions simply say accept. It depends upon the nature of the grant and what is required. In, in talking with Denise Savageau in this particular grant, this particular grant does not require the authority to apply. It simply requires the authority to accept the receipts and then the, the normal authority to appropriate. So it can vary from grant to grant. This grant is appropriate as presented to you. Further discussion on item five. Item six now comes before us. May we have the resolution on that item? David Tice, our selectman. Good evening, Mr. Moderator, ladies and gentlemen of the RTM. Good to be with you again. Happy New Year. Healthy, many returns. Be it resolved that the following named person nominated by the Board of Selectmen be appointed at a regular member at a a regular member of the Board of Social Services for a term expiring 331-15, Alan Gunsberg. Thank you. Will the member please move the adoption of the resolution? Resolution on item six has been moved and seconded. And with her maiden committee report, here's Alexis Vulgaris, Chair of our Health and Human Services Committee. Good evening. The Health and Human Services Committee met on Tuesday, January 10th to discuss and vote upon Mr. Gunsberg's nomination to the Board of Social Services. Mr. Gunsberg is a 15-year resident of Coscop. He was born with a degenerative retinal disease which has impaired his sight, specifically his peripheral vision, and consequently he has become a very active advocate for the rights and needs of the disabled in Greenwich. Some of the ways he volunteers in the community are by speaking to students at Eastern Middle School annually when they study a unit on disabilities and working with students attending the Coscop summer school program. In both settings, he encourages the students to think about being disabled as the beginning of something different and new rather than an insurmountable challenge. Mr. Gunsberg is also a member of the Citizens and Police Program, or CAP. While working at CAP, he has been involved with projects such as making sure curb cuts for new sidewalks follow code and that sidewalks are accessible for disabled residents after a snowstorm or during the town's fall leaf collection program. Prior to devoting the majority of his time to the awareness and advocacy for disabled citizens, he was a senior manager with Xerox, where he had significant responsibilities managing people, budgets, and programs. Mr. Gunsberg believes that his professional managerial experience, coupled with his advocacy work, would provide a unique and valuable perspective for the Board of Social Services. Mr. Gunsberg stated that one area he is especially interested in exploring, if successfully appointed to the Board, is that of assisting social service clients to re-enter the workforce. He notes that for a disabled client, the ability to return to work or train for new job skills is often four times more difficult than for an individual with no disability. He strives to reach residents who have a disability and because of their disabil disability, have become detached or disenfranchised for their, from their community. <clears throat> it should also be noted that in preparation for working with the Board of Social Services, Mr. Gunsberg has attended three board meetings to date. Our committee felt that he would be a wonderful and welcome addition to the board, and we voted unanimously 12-0-0 to recommend him. Thank you. Thank you. Chris von Kaiserling with the report of our appointments committee. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. It is a pleasure to have my co-chairman or uh, fellow chairman give that report. 
It was very full. We saw Mr. Gunsberg on 1-9 of this month. Uh, the vote was 12-0-0 in favor. The only thing I would add to it besides a uh, particularly impressed committee by his services and what he brings forth is that he pointed out two things. Uh, m many times it's people's challenges and disabilities that uh, bring them to social services need in the first place and he's most interested in bringing those people to a position where they can be self-sufficient on their own and a fully operating citizen of the community. 12 zero, zero. Thank you. Discussion on item six. Mary Ferry, District 5. I want to thank the Board of Selectmen for sending us a lot of nominations ahead of the March meeting. It's wonderful. However, for clarity, to me, it, there's a little bit of a problem with this resolution because this is a new nomination. It's not a reappointment. And in the case of a reappointment, whoever is there stays until replaced. But this is a new nomination which does not start until April 1st. 2012. Therefore, I would like to amend the resolution after it says member of the Board of Surf Social Services for a term, I would like to insert beginning April 1st, 2012 and, and then it would go expiring 331.15. And I so move, Mr. Moderator. All right, it has been moved and seconded to amend item six to include the following language at the end for a term beginning April 1, 2012, and expiring, uh, and the rest of it is as appears. So we are inserting beginning April 1, 2012, and is there any objection to that motion to amend? Object. Mr. Von Keisling. Discussion on the motion to amend. This resolution before you is in the standard format. All terms expire on March 31st of the particular year of the appointment. We have various board uh, terms, some are two years, some are three years, some are four, and some even five years. Uh, it is, the person is, serves until replaced. We have people now that are serving, and if I believe Mr. Gunsberg is not replacing anyone, this is a brand new term. So they all start. Is he replacing? He is replacing uh, Miss. I'm sorry. This is a peculiar. I stand corrected. Uh, this is an interim replacement of Marianne Ramos, who has retired, and he's going to replace replace her. And what the selectmen have done is put him forward to replace the the rest of her term, which expires on 15th. The remainder of it. There's currently a vacancy on it. It's a replacement for a regular term, interim. It is to fill, fill the, fi the full, excuse me, to fill the rest of that term, interim. Whereas Ms. Arenas, if you put, if you take, remember, last uh, spring, I believe, she was nominated to, f to fill out a, a term that was vacated. Uh, that will be completed. That term is up this 31st. What you're acting on today will be to uh, appoint her to her own term starting March 30, uh, excuse me, April 1st for the next uh, period of time expiring as stated. So this is a interim appointment and therefore commences upon your action tonight. Thank you. Yes, Ms. Ferry, I, I understand that raises yet another issue. Uh, we cannot extend the term of any candidate who comes before us for an appointment. So uh, if, if what we are saying is that we are merely appointing Mr. Gunsberg to a vacant position currently, whose term expires March 31 of this year, that's a different issue. And that would require a different amendment of this resolution. So I think Ms. Ferry, see, the, the problem Ms. Ferry points out um, is an important one, and I thank Mary Ferry for the, the attention she gives to the detail of uh, our historical record. The resolution speaks for itself. It says we are appointing someone when we vote on this. So if we are merely 
filling a vacancy for a term expiring this year, then the, the resolution ought to say that. Mr. Von Kaisling. Mr. Moderator, I think you're absolutely correct. Uh, the term, this is for the unexpired portion of that term. Uh, we were under the impression that it ended in the 15th, uh, on a, a year 15. Uh, it was our, mis our misconception. Uh, we're checking with the selectmen now to see when Ms. Ramos' term actually did terminate. You're appointing him from April 1st on? So, in that case, what they're you saying... You withdraw your objection. No, no. Their objection is, if, if we're back to where we're giving him a full term... Beginning April 1st. Beginning April 1st. And our, our and resolution must reflect that it is not beginning tonight. That's, that is Mary Ferry's point. Well, the point is, is that it... You are agreed that we are now, that this appointment will take effect no. April, April 1st and not tonight. That's correct. That's what the then, selectmen then, Mr. intended. Mr. Von Kaiseling, may I suggest that we, we all agree on the amendment? Is there any other objection? So you have withdrawn your objection. Is there any other objection to the pending motion to amend? Hearing none, we may adopt amendments upon unanimous consent. So item six now reads for a term beginning April 1, 2012 and expiring March 31, 2015. Further discussion on item six. Item 11 now comes before us. Diane Fox, our town planner. Thank you, Mr. Ch Moderator. Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Happy New Year. The resolution reads as follows. Resolved that the Planning and Zoning Commission of the Town of Greenwich is hereby authorized to accept receipts from the Gulf of Maine Council in the amount of, and we need to correct this, $7,720, and these receipts to become appropriations in appropriate accounts upon approval of the Board of Estimate and Taxation. The reason for the change from 7500 to 7720 is that we got the letter and they gave us more money. All right, so that is the only change in the number to the resolution? All right, is there any objection? Well, first of all, let me get this before us. Will a member please move the adoption of the resolution? The resolution on item 11 has been moved and seconded. Uh, we now have, Mr. Tuthill, you're moving to amend item 11 to change the number from 7,500 to 7,720, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. Is there a second to that? Is there any objection? That motion to amend may be adopted upon unanimous consent. May we hear the committee reports on uh, item 11? Mr. Berg. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. The uh, Land Use Committee took this item up last Monday. Uh, Katie Blankley, our assistant town planner, presented it. And we had all received the uh, substitute resolution by that meeting. Um, so again, it's $7,720 grant from Gulf of Maine Council, uh, which in turn also receives its, its funding from the federal government. And the purpose here is to map the elevation of first floor living space in homes within the 100 year flood plain. Uh, there, there's two purposes for this. One is uh, uh, to be able to identify structures that are in danger of flooding and in need of evacuation when severe flooding storms strike Greenwich um, and to assist first responders in preemptive evacuations as well as to pre prepare for uh, at-risk properties in town. And secondly, the uh, mapping will also assist in developing and monitoring town regulations for building elevations in the flood zone. And you all received uh, a colored map of the town showing where that, um, uh, where that 100 year floodplain uh, line is. Our vote on this item was 12 0 0. Thank you. Discussion on item 11. Will the district chairs please mark your voting cards? Combined calendar items 5, 6, and 11, and proceed to poll your delegation. 
I have the result of the vote on our consent calendar items. Those were item seven, the appointment of Angelica Arenas to the Board of Social Services, and item nine, the appointment of David Ormsby to the Nathaniel Witherell Board. Those in favor, 195. Opposed, zero. Abstaining, zero. The consent calendar items have carried. Item eight now comes before us. May we have the resolution on that item? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Be it resolved that the following named person nominated by the Board of Selectmen be reappointed at a regular, as a regular member of the Nathaniel Witherell Board for a term expiring 3-31-15, Lloyd Bankson. Thank you. Will member please move the adoption of the resolution? Resolution on item 8 has been moved and seconded. Elect, uh, Mr. Von Kaiserling, Chair of our Appointments Committee. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, we had tried to schedule Mr. Bankson for the 9th. He was not able to make the meeting. As uh, we all know from the uh, charter that a member, uh, an incumbent member serves until replaced, we moved at the, since we did not able to interview him, we moved to have postpone this one uh, to the March meeting when Mr. Bankson should be available. Uh, we ask, ask, we advise you to postpone, make that motion. Thank you. Ms. Volgaris, did you care to make your report? Hi. Um, the Health and Human Services Committee met on January 10th to discuss and vote upon the renomination of Mr. Bankson to the Board of Nathaniel Witherall. Mr. Bankson presently chairs the Board's Finance Committee. Mr. Bankson has been a very invested and involved member of the Board. If, if you oh. want to hold off, we're going to take up a motion okay. to postpone. So. If you want to wait, await it's fine. Uh, the result of that. Yeah, we can hold off until March. It's no right. problem. So uh, why don't, if, if that motion to postpone does not carry, then I'll come back to you for your full report. Okay. All right. Mr. Uh, von Kaiserling? I would so move, Mr. All right. Uh, the Appointments Committee has moved to postpone item 8 to our March, it was our March meeting. And that being a motion made on behalf of one of our committees does not require a second. All those in favor of, yes, Mr. Boutel. All right, we, um, All right, Mr. Boutel is referring to the word reappointed in item eight, distinguishing an incumbent who we are appointing to an additional term versus someone we are appointing for the first time. And uh, I agree that our, we should be consistent with the language of our resolution, and I also believe that there is no need to indicate reappointment. What we are doing is appointing someone to a term that is specific, um, and whether it's an incumbent or not does not need to be mentioned in the resolution. So it is uh, my recommendation that all of our appointment resolutions merely have the word appointed rather than reappointed. And you see the ones we have acted on tonight um, for incumbents, those were items seven and nine, only had the words appointed. So we, we really should be consistent in this. Mr. Moderator, uh, would you entertain a motion to amend that? To I, so we, could, we could amend that. And then we don't have to go. And refer. then you don't have to refer it, and it would automatically come back. So uh, I would be do happy you, to you want so. to withdraw the motion to postpone that is currently pending? No, I would, like, I would say that we're postponing the item. We're talking here about Scrivener's language, so it doesn't change the content of the, no, no, of no, the I'm item. Just, I, I know, but. Um, the motion to postpone has priority over a motion to amend, so you'll have to withdraw that before. Um, well, bef it, it, because I'll have to call for a vote on the motion to postpone okay. before I can take you up the motion I to amend. Mr. Moderator, since we're really getting into finer details here that don't affect the substance of it, uh, is it suggested that this? Mr. Von Kaisling, may I suggest you yes. simply withdraw the motion to postpone? We'll amend it, and then I'll I come will, back. I will withdraw. 
All right, on behalf of your committee, you are withdrawing that temporarily. Pending, pending the you are now amendment. making a motion to amend item eight to change the word reappointed to appointed. Yeah, personally, I'm making that. Yes, you are. Is there a second? Is there any objection to that? Hearing none, that motion to amend item eight is adopted upon unanimous consent. You that, now have a motion to postpone the, the amended item eight to our March meeting. That's correct, sir. All right, and that is now currently before us. It does not require a second. Um, I will call for a voice vote. All those in favor of postponing item eight to our March meeting, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? That motion has carried. Item 10 now comes before us. Drew Marzullo, Selectman. Congratulations and welcome to the new members, uh, returning members. Congratulations to Tom uh, and Joan both. Uh, resolve that the following named person be nominated by the Board of Selectmen be appointed a regular member of the Nathaniel Witherall Board for a term expiring 3-13-2015, Dr. Frank Scarpa. Thank you. Will the member please move the adoption of the resolution? The resolution on item 10 has been moved and seconded. May we have the reports on this item? Ms. Boutel? Pardon me? Item 10. All right. May we have which committee report will go first? Mr. Von Keiseling with the Appointments Committee report. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. After a long, hard fight that we all in this committee, in this uh, body, are familiar with to get uh, the Nathaniel Witherell uh, appropriations through, Ms. Dr. Scarpa has taken a nice, rewarded vacation with his wife and will be away for a month or so. Uh, we were not able to see him on the 9th, and therefore the committee would uh, move to postpone his uh, appointment, uh, this item, to the April RTM meeting. All right. Ms. Volgaris, did you care to? Yeah. All right. Uh, so that motion to postpone item 10 to the April meeting, having been made on behalf of one of our committees, it does not require a second and is currently before us. All those in favor of postponing item 10 to our April meeting, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? That motion to postpone has carried. Um, that being the last item on our agenda, we will await the result of the tally of the vote on our combined items. Uh, ex could I just have everyone's attention, please, um, particularly the district and committee chairs. Congratulations to you all on your election to that position. Joan Caldwell, the moderator pro tem, and I are going to schedule a meeting of the committee and district chairs. It is likely to be in the month of February, and I just wanted to alert you to that, and you will hear more in the near future. I have the result of the vote on the combined items. Those were items 5, 6, and 11. Those in favor, 186. Opposed, 0. Abstaining, 0. The combined items have carried. There being no further business to come before the meeting, and absent objection, meeting stands adjourned upon unanimous consent. Thank you all for coming. Have a safe trip home.